Welcome to another round of tokenomics diagram walkthrough. I've written an article on this, so I thought I'd uh, do a little walkthrough through this um, diagram, especially Terra or Luna as it's called, is, is quite complex. So the whole thing is based on two tokens. Um, the one's called Luna and the other is not really called Terra, but since it's a stable coin, what this ecosystem is trying to represent there's it can be pegged to many different fiat currencies but of course the <coughs> most popular one is us dollar and the ticker for that is ust so that's probably one of the most popular ones if you go to coin gecko you'll you'll find that one um with quite a high market cap at the moment <coughs> and excuse me and yeah so the goal is really of this whole ecosystem is to provide a stable coin and it's an algorithmic stablecoin. There's a couple of other type of stablecoins, um, fiat-backed. So that means there's some central entity that uh, holds US dollar or something equal or equivalent to that. And then there is um, protocols like MakerDAO, which issue DAI, which is um, somewhat crypto-backed. And uh, yeah, so Terra, what Terra tries to be is to be a truly decentralized stablecoin, meaning it's not really backed by anything and it's completely decentralized without um, touching with any centralized authorities and the way they achieve that is really with these two tokens um, Terra on the one side representing like I said the, the stable coin and Luna on the other side being this utility token that's used to control the the price of that and so yeah maybe see this here, the pegging mechanism, this is really the, the most important part of how this protocol works. I'll see this here as a, a deep down or a drilled down version of this, this other box here. So in here, what happens typically in the market where we can buy and sell, so that be any centralized or decentralized exchange, or we can buy and sell um, UST in this, in this case, or any other uh, pegged Terra version. And let's say the price goes above peg and that could happen because there um, all of a sudden is a high demand for this Terra token. And that could be something as so, something like, oh, we're, we're going to expect a market crash and we're going to get out of our volatile crypto assets, save them into a US dollar pegged asset and kind of wait for the market to, to yeah, get down and we're going to buy back in or something like that. And that would create a high demand for this Terra token. And if you have a high demand in a market, then that typically increases the price if supply stays the same, right? And so, yeah, we'd have something like UST could, could get up to $1.1 um, instead of $1. And what then happens in the Terra protocol is that uh, Terra starts minting um, UST in this case, right? So this Terra token. So it mints that Terra token, and then in this uh, protocol internal market maker, users who hold Luna, they then have this opportunity to swap Luna for Terra one for one, right? So they can give them one Luna token and receive an equivalent amount of, of Terra, um, cheaper than if they would buy it on the market, but then they can take that Terra and sell it on the market, right? So they've kind of bought it for one dollar but they can sell it at the market price let's say that's 1.1 dollar so they have this arbitrage opportunity and of course what that would do it would increase supply for this token right so um and and that ideally brings the price back down right so that we'd th they would have that arbitrage opportunity would profit from it and by that bring the peg back down towards one dollar the protocol itself they would burn luna and make Luna more scarce, and um, the of course the other other round of that is 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 pretty similar. We got the price below peg, so that's say there's a low demand for Terra, um, <clears throat> so people might lose faith in Terra or move to die because that's cooler, and then you would see the price going down to 0.99 or something like that, and then the Terra protocol would now start to mint Luna and offer offer that similar arbitrage opportunity this time users can swap their terra and receive luna and in order to uh, fulfill that they would buy terra off the market to get that luna from the protocol right 
And by buying Terra off the market, they would increase the demand and bring the peg back up. So that's kind of how the other side of that mechanism works. And in this case, Terra would be burnt by the protocol, right? So we'd reduce that supply ultimately of of Terra. And um, with that, kind of try to try to bring that price back down, right? So this is a really interesting mechanism. There is some uh, long-term implications of this. And there's been some really interesting analysis by a guy called Murray Rudd. I'll, I'll link him. Uh, down in the in the video because that's kind that's that's kind of interesting what he did there and um yeah so that's kind of what this what this protocol does right we're for the market <coughs> we're increasing the terra supply or reducing the terra supply right just with that sole purpose of keeping each and every of those versions of terra pegged um, to the respective currency, right? So there's one for Korean won, there's one for Euro, but the main one is really US US dollar. So they're trying to keep that. And then um, they used to have the seniorage model. I still have this in this diagram because they used to have it. They don't really use it anymore. So um, in this operation of minting Terra or minting Luna, um, usually a protocol would have something like seniorage, which means they can mint a token at zero cost, but they can sell it <laughs> for something, right? So somebody's willing to pay them for that. Similar like banks, central banks, they introduce a currency and um, printing that piece of paper costs them less than the $100 that it might be worth, but they can still, it's still worth $100, right? So they kind of profit from that. Um, they used to put that in the treasury, at least partly, but now they burn it, um, that seniorage. <clears throat> Another part of the supply is the... Uh, yeah, is really the genesis supply. One billion of uh, total supply of Luna. Um, yeah, that's that's vested, gone to multiple team members. Uh, I'll link the article where you can kind of look more into that if you're interested. Another interesting point of this ecosystem is is the demand, right? So we talked about the supply mainly here, how to make sure that peg stays the same. Um, and the genesis supply and where that came from, but like the demand for this stable coin. And I mean, if you think about like how stable coins are used in the whole crypto sphere, currently stable coins are really made for uh, trading, right? So anything that in, in the crypto world, if you go to a centralized exchange and you move from um, this to that or other exchanges, they mainly do this in, in like stable coins, these steps in between. Is, is is how these trades or the liquidity is provided in the stable coins. So that's kind of what, what Terra um, tries to do here as well. And so what they've done, they've built this whole ecosystem. So they've got a whole bunch of other applications. They've got this chai thing, which they use in Korea to, um, again, users can pay with that. Uh, so they can load it up with Korean ones. They can pay with that. And in the back end, it's kind of processed via, via the Terra ecosystem, I guess. And then they've got Mira, which is a, kind of synthetics version where you have synthetic assets so you can have stocks on um, on here and that's also closely linked to to Terra to UST and therefore it creates demand for it and same for anchor which is a um, yeah savings protocol where you get like a stable yield so that creates demand for Terra really and they, they, they try to expand it so they've recently um, brought Terra to multiple different blockchains. Um, currently, they're working together with ThorChain to uh, bring it on their cross-chain exchange, which to me will be a, a really cool thing because then, yeah, you can really trade Bitcoin for UST completely decentralized. And uh, I guess that will be a, a, a big pool of liquidity on the ThorChain side, this UST coin, because it's decentralized and that kind of fits to what ThorChain is doing as well. Yeah, and then, of course, users, investors, whoever, they can sell, buy, trade this stuff, um, Luna and or Terra on the market. And the ecosystem kind of, they do a lot of airdrops of, of Luna and other tokens if you have staked yours. Yeah, and it's really a proof of stake consensus, actually a delegated proof of stake consensus mechanism right and it's got all the normal usual stuff that um, a lot of other blockchains have so um, <clears throat> there's a tax or a gas fee on transactions that is um, repurposed in the system or paid back to 
uh, validators and delegators. Users can can stake their Terra or sorry can stake their Luna. So you can you can go to their website and um, you can take your Luna and stake it. Even if you don't run a validator node, you can delegate it to a validator node and you'll receive an APR, so an annual reward that is paid out in Luna to your account. And um, yeah, then they've got some other, uh, I guess, rights to vote on exchange rates um, of this of this Terra to make sure that on their swap, on their exchange, the the price is kind of tied to um, is is tied to really the U.S. dollar. So that's really how the how the ecosystem works. I think it's a really interesting. Um, mechanism to peg yeah a stable coin completely decentralized to a fiat currency like us dollar and uh yeah it's been somewhat successful so ust is one of the more popular stable coins out there if you look at coin gecko you look at the charts and the and the volume um it's pretty high up there so that's that's really interesting we'll have to see if they can increase demand for UST and keep that up. And that will have really interesting price implications on Luna. Like I said, maybe read into Murray Rudd's uh, Substack. I'll link it down below. But yeah, uh, thanks for listening in.